We rotary plunge diamond dress our aluminum oxide wheels and then there's an argument on the shop floor about which direction to run the dresser. What's your take? When you have a rotary diamond dresser, either a traverse disc or a plunge roll, you have two options about which direction to run it. You can run it in the unidirectional mode when they go together or you might call it the crushing mode because when they meet the diamond sort of crushes the grit or you can go in the anti-directional mode where they're going in opposite directions. Uh, which way you choose to go will give you very, very different conditions during grinding. Let's take a look at this situation here. This is an output from the grindometer where we measure spindle power. And here I was grinding nickel alloys, ink and L's with an aluminum oxide wheel. And the dresser was going in the anti-directional mode. And we got a certain power output. Now remember, power and heat go hand in hand. So if I have more power, I have more heat, and I have more temperature. And what we did was we just changed the direction of the roll. So instead of going anti-directional, we went unidirectional. And the result was that the power was cut in half. We cut the power in half. We cut the heat in half. We more or less cut the temperature in half. And that's because when you go in the anti-directional mode, the diamonds just sort of clip the aluminum oxide grits. When you go in the unidirectional mode, the diamonds come and they sort of kamikaze or they sort of crush the aluminum oxide grits, giving you a much sharper wheel. I had an issue with a customer of mine about a year ago, and they called me up and they said, you got to help us. Uh, we're grinding and our parts are coming out toasty. They're just black. We don't know what to do. I said, okay. So I was like, got on the phone with them, spent three hours on the phone, and we looked at everything about the grinding process. We looked at grinding, dressing, cooling, what parameters they're using, what's their depth of cut, what kind of speeds are they using, how are they dressing their wheel, what's their plunge depth, what's their dwell time, uh, cooling, what kind of cooling velocity do they have. And after three hours on the phone, I said, I don't know. I mean, everything you're doing seems to be reasonable. I don't think you should be getting this atrocious burn. Then the next day I went out to the company and I basically just camped out on the machine and I looked at everything again. What's their depth of cut on each pass? What's their speed? What's their wheel speed? And then when the operator said, oh, we're running at 3000 RPM, we actually got a tachometer. Are we really running at 3000 RPM? Uh, when they said, well, here's what pressure we're getting. So therefore here's the velocity we're getting out of our nozzles. Well, we got a bucket. We actually measured the flow rate, did the calculations. We did everything to see what was going on with this process. Then it came to the time to look at the plunge roll. And I said, OK, what's your plunge speed? Uh, how, you know, what's your um, inches per minute on your plunge? How long are you dwelling? And I said, well, now are you going in the unidirectional mode like this or the anti-directional mode? And the operator said, oh, we're going unidirectional. No, anti-direct, no, 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 we're going unidirectional. And I said, okay, let's check this out. So went in the back of the machine, took off the covers, fired up the wheel, fired up the dresser, turned them off, watched them spin to a stop, and lo and behold, they were spinning in the anti-directional direction. And he said, well, I don't know what's going on. We, we always dress unidirectional, but the, uh, the spindle motor on that dresser, we just changed it last week. And it turned out it was a pneumatically driven dresser. Pneumatically driven dresser. You just change the leads. All of a sudden, you're going in the opposite direction. So the solution was very simple. We just went back, changed the leads, went to the unidirectional mode, dressed in the wheel, ground a few parts. The burn has disappeared because we made the wheel sharp. So you pretty much want to go in the unidirectional mode to eliminate burn. And you almost never want to go in the anti-directional mode because you just get colossal forces, you get colossal heat generation, and it's really tough to battle. 
with this company that I visited that was getting the parts that were toasty, I could have worked like hell on their cooling, I could have worked on their grinding parameters, but in the end I had to pinpoint where was that weakest link or what were they doing wrong. Turned out they were dressing in the anti-directional mode, which is a very easy way to get burn. We fix that, we go unidirectional mode, burn disappears. Now, some people will say, well, but then your surface finish is going to get rougher. And that's true. If you go in the unidirectional mode, your surface finish will get rougher, but the solution is not to go in the anti-directional mode and make the wheel dull. The solution is just make your grit size a little smaller. Go for the grit size that's appropriate for the surface finish you're trying to get. Dress the wheel in the unidirectional mode. Dress the wheel sharp. Now you've got small grits to give you a good surface finish, but you have small sharp grits to give you good cutting, less heat generation, smaller normal forces, less risk of chatter. You got the best of both worlds, and that's really a much better approach.